The day we're taking a look at these NCAAF matches, which are happening on Wednesday, November 9, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, by becoming a member of the High Stakes Patreon, you will have access to our best team picks, total picks, parlay picks and much more. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting predictions that ends up costing you a lot of time and money. Join the High Stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Western Michigan Broncos vs Northern Illinois Huskies. Western Michigan Broncos vs Northern Illinois Huskies. Both teams have had their struggles while playing musical quarterback this season. Northern Illinois has the advantage on the offensive side of the ball, but their defensive performances have been dreadful to say the least. The Huskies have surrendered at least 31 points in six of their nine games this season and have held only one opponent under 24 points. Western Michigan has had dismal quarterback play, but they do have a good one-to-two punch in the ground game with Tyler and Jefferson. The Broncos surrender 133.7 yards per game and 3.8 yards per carry on the ground, so they should be able to at least slow down the Northern Illinois' run game. Seeing how leaky the Huskies' defense is, it's hard to trust them, even against an offensively challenged Broncos team. Take Western Michigan at home in this contest. Take the Western Michigan Broncos. The Huskies are averaging 30.1 points per game and allowing 33.2 points per game, while the Broncos are averaging 19.4 points per game and surrendering 26.8 points per game. With this being said, Northern Illinois should be able to score a few touchdowns, reaching their average against a less than ideal defense that's allowing 365.1 yards per game. The Broncos are playing a quarterback who has played two games this season, giving himself a 1-1 record. He has been fairly consistent with his passing game, allowing his team to get downfield. Against a team that allows 261.3 yards through the air, expect Berga to pout his offense in the position to score touchdowns. Take the over because both defenses haven't been performing well, allowing each offense to put points on the board. Take the over 52 points. Central Michigan vs Buffalo. The Bulls had their five-game winning streak snapped by the Bobcats in their last game. They will try to bounce back from the loss with a win over the Chippewas, which will give them their sixth win in their last seven games. Buffalo is averaging 30.1 points per game. They are throwing for 241.6 yards and rushing for 141.7 yards per game. Cole Snyder completed 51% of his passes for 238 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception in the loss to the Bobcats. Mike Washington had six carries for 19 yards, while Justin Marshall had six catches for 72 yards and one touchdown. The Chippewas followed up their loss to Bowling Green with a win over the Huskies in their last game. They will try to keep the momentum going with a win over the Bulls, which will give them their second win in a row and third win in their last four games. Central Michigan is averaging 26.3 points per game. They are throwing for 246.4 yards and rushing for 144.7 yards per game. Daniel Richardson completed 59% of his passes for 150 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception in the win over the Huskies. Jace Bauer had 14 carries for 109 yards and two touchdowns, while Jalen Magogi had two catches for 36 yards. The Bulls have won five of their last six games and three of their last four road games. They are playing very well offensively, scoring 34 points or more in three of their last four games. They have a balanced defense and the 62nd best passing game in the country. The Chippewas have struggled against the pass this season and will have a hard time slowing down the Bulls. The Chippewas have lost four of their last six games and three of their last four home games. They struggled offensively during that stretch and were held under 20 points in four of their last six games. They've had a lot of success passing the ball, but they won't be as efficient against the Bulls, who have a very good pass defense and will struggle offensively once again, so go with the Bulls to cover the spread. Take the Buffalo Bulls minus two points. 
The Buffalo Bulls have been doing a pretty good job on the offensive side of the football, as they are putting up 30.1 points on 383.2 total yards of offense. They are depending on the arm of sophomore quarterback Cole Snyder to take them over the hump here, as he is completing 58.9% of his passes for 2,145 yards, with 14 touchdowns and 6 interceptions on the season. It definitely helps to have a veteran wide receiver like Justin Marshall, who has 41 receptions for 569 yards, 13.9 yards per catch, with 6 touchdown grabs. If they are able to continue having a solid connection in this game, it will be a great sign for their offense. The Central Michigan Chippewas have been a decent offensive team behind sophomore quarterback Daniel Richardson, as he has completed just 56.6% of his passes for 1,893 yards, with 15 touchdowns and 5 interceptions. This team is built to run the football, and sophomore running back Lou Nichols III has shown the ability to do so consistently, as he has 160 rushing attempts for 561 yards, 3.5 yards per carry, with 6 rushing touchdowns. If they can continue to improve offensively, they can up their numbers and pull off this victory. Neither team is converting too well on third down attempts, as Buffalo is converting on 38.57% of their attempts, while Central Michigan is moving the chains on 35.51% of their chances. Both defenses have been doing well in their last four games, as the Bulls are allowing 21.5 points per game, while the Chippewas are giving up 23.5 points per game in that stretch as well. Both teams struggle against the run, and that will be a tough spot, as the clock is going to continuously tick down. All in all, go with under 55.5 points in this game. Bowling Green vs Kent State The Kent State Golden Flashes are currently in 5th place in the MAC East, as they desperately need to win this game if they want to climb the standings. Kent State is also 2-3 in conference play this season. On offense, the Golden Flashes are scoring 27.4 points per game, and they are averaging 431 total yards of offense. This is the 74th most points scored per game, and the 40th most yards. They have shown that they can consistently move the ball, but they have relied on their rushing attack this season. The Golden Flashes are currently running for 211.3 yards per game, which is the 18th most in the country. Marquez Cooper is the Golden Flash's lead back, as he has recorded 1,013 rushing yards this season and 9 touchdowns. Last week, he ran for 168 yards and scored a touchdown against Ball State. Kent State is also throwing for 219.7 yards per game, which is the 87th most in the country. Colin Schley will start at quarterback, as the junior has recorded 1,731 passing yards this season and 9 touchdowns. Against Ball State, he threw for 183 yards and one touchdown. He will look to get the ball to their leading receiver, Dante Cephas, but he is currently listed as day-to-day -day with a lower body injury. He is questionable for this game. I will be taking the Bowling Green Falcons, plus 2.5, at home, as I see them making more plays on the defensive side of the field. Both of these teams surrender a ton of points and yards per game, but the Bowling Green Falcons will be able to slow down the Kent State rushing attack. The Falcons have been much better at stopping the run this season, as they are only surrendering the 80th most rush yards per game. Bowling Green will also be able to throw the ball all over the Kent State defense, as the Golden Flashes are giving up the 123rd most passing yards per game. Their secondary has continued to get beat down the field, as the Bowling Green offense will consistently put points up on the board. Kent State is also giving up the 109th most points per game and the 120th most yards, as the Falcons will be able to consistently march the ball up and down the field. They are 4-1 in the conference this season, and I see them staying hot in this game as well. The Golden Flashes have continued to struggle this season, and I don't see them scoring enough points to cover the spread in this game. The Falcons will load the box and force Kent State to beat them through the air, but that won't happen. The Bowling Green secondary will step up and consistently get the ball back to their offense. Pick the Bowling Green Falcons and take the points, plus 2.5. Neither team has been doing too well on stopping the run, as the Golden Flashes are allowing 170.1 rushing yards per game, while the Falcons are giving up 157.1 rushing yards per game, so that means they are going to take down the clock as they are dominating and making things a bit tougher. 
these offenses are not producing enough points in order to expect this number to be within reach, as Kent State is averaging 27 points per game in their last four games, while Bowling Green is scoring 17.8 points per game in that same stretch. The under is 4-1-1 in the last six Golden Flashes games, as well as in 27 of the previous 37 home games, versus a team with a losing road record, so go with under 57.5 points in this game.